Welcome everyone to another lecture in anatomy and today I will talk to you about the anatomy of the eyeball. So let me start first uh, uh, by giving you uh, a kind of a brief introduction about different parts of the eye. It's kind of a, a, an overview or just an orientation of for the different parts uh, forming the eyeball. First of all, you have to know that the eyeball is composed from or consists of three coats. That means there is inner coat, there is intermediate coat, and there is outer coat. It's like layers over each other. So the most external one is the toughest one, right? It's tough, right? So it's called the fibrous coat. So the second one is the vascular coat and the inner one is the uh, retina or we call it nervous coat so this is nervous coat vascular coat and fibrous coat let us start with the first one just all still we are talking, uh, just uh, a brief introduction this is the fibrous coat let us start from outside so this is the sclera the sclera is the white of the eye that means that gives your eye the white color in Arabic so this is the uh, sclera the white part of your eye it continues all the way until it treats anteriorly now let us uh, because we said it's a coat that means it covers the whole eye so posteriorly until like the this region it's the sclera, but once treated most anteriorly, the anterior pool of the eye, it's replaced by a very important structure, which is the cornea. You would imagine here that the sclera is opaque structure. That means no light pass in or out from it, while the cornea is a transparent structure that allows the light to get in. Anyway, the cornea and the sclera both they form the fibrous coat. Now, let us move now to the uh, second intermediate coat, which is the uh, what we call it the vascular coat. Vascular coat. Let us start also from posteriorly. Vascular coat contains the choroid, right? And here also the choroid is a very vascular structure this is the choroid choroid now continues as structure like a pyramid called ciliary uh, body this is the ciliary body then the ciliary body continues anteriorly to finish this coat right as the iris so this is the iris this is the last part just just also because we talk, this is this is just introduction. So the iris that gives your eyes the color. Some people they have they call them green green eyes, blue eyes, black eyes, and so forth. So this is the vascular coat, including choroid, then ciliary body, then anterior continues the iris. Look at the iris. It's not fused anteriorly. That means there is a hole here. This hole is the pupil. This is the pupil. Now this is the second coat. Now the third coat is the uh, what we call the retina. This is the retina here. This is the retina started posteriorly and move anteriorly. Right. This is the retina that of course continues anteriorly it has two parts optic part and non-visual part but leave it for now this is the most inner uh, layer of the eye so the retina of course if you look at the this is again the anteriorly which is the uh, cornea and the i would use this color now um, let me use the blue the yellow color is the retina right so the retina has an optic disc here you see the optic nerve the optic nerve and it has inside its central retinal artery and 
veins, those penetrates the eye posteriorly. That means this area uh, that uh, contains the head of optic nerve and vessels has no cones or rods or any kind of photoreceptors. That means there is no vision at this point. That means it's called a blind spot. Now, lateral to it, there is a small area, a yellow area here called macula lutea. We'll talk about it. And in the center of macula lutea, there is a small depression fovea centralis. This is the area of the highest acuity and for color vision. It's for central vision. Central vision, that means when you look for somebody, the, the what you see in the front of your eyes, for example, his face should be formed here. This is for central vision, colored vision, we'll talk more about it. And for the highest, um, I would say, the highest accuracy uh, vision. Now, the retina, if you take a cross section, uh, if you take a cross section, um, if let me use this. Okay, if you take a cross section here, forget this is not true. So if you take cross section here through the optic nerve and the layers of the eye pole posterior in the posterior pole, you will see this is the optic nerve. Yes, and this is the uh, sclera, the white color of the eye, and this is the choroid, right? And now this is the retina, right? This is the retina. Uh, or the nervous coat, the inner one, right? So it composed the retina composed from uh, around 10 layers. But there are many different types of cells there. Most importantly, it's good to know that you have uh, a photoreceptor cells, very important photoreceptor cells. They are rods and cones, al-asi wal makharit and you have also bipolar neurons plus you have ganglion cells here ganglion cells or neurons their axons the ganglion cell uh, axons extend now like this to form what you see here the optic nerve now still we we just um, uh, have an overview uh, uh, of the different structure of the eye pole, and we we mentioned the different structures forming the coats of the eye pole. Now let us move a little bit interior uh, uh, to the interior of the eye. Here we mentioned that there is a ciliary body and there is uh, a ciliary. There are ciliary processes here right we'll talk more about that but for now you have to know that these ciliary processes is responsible for secretion of a clear fluid we call it aqueous aqueous humor right it's called aqueous humor secreted from here and for now you have to know that yes this is the cornea behind the cornea there is a chamber anterior chamber here this space is the anterior chamber. And this is the iris. Behind the iris now, there is a posterior chamber here. Right? So the aqueous humor, I will use a red color, secreted from ciliary process here in the posterior chamber and passes through the pupil. This is the opening of the pupil here. Right? From posterior chamber to the anterior chamber through the pupil then from anterior chamber once it reached here should be drained it's drained through openings at the sclerocorneal junction this is sclera and this is the cornea the junction here called a uh, sclerocorneal or corneocleral junction there is um, a system of interconnected kind of ducts which is very close to the lymphatic ducts uh, in which it's it creates like a mesh around the uh, that area we call it um, uh, Schlem's canal we call it Schlem's canal so it's like what look at it here it's a it's a kind of a mesh like this right interconnected 
interconnected uh, vessels in which the aqueous humor, of course, it drained there, then to the venous system, right? So look at this figure. I took it from the internet. They are trying, this is the cornea, of course. You see here, this is the lower eyelid and this is the upper eyelid. And uh, you see here, this is the corneocleural junction at this area. And you know, there is a Schlimm's canal here. They inserted this catheter. You see the blue catheter here? Yes, they create an opening here and they are trying to insert it in this uh, uh, Schlimm canal here through the Schlimm's canal just to reopen it and something like that. Also, what we have also, we have uh, uh, an embryonic structure, although it will change its um, uh, uh, structure, but it's called uh, uh, vitreous body vitreous body this is the uh, vitreous body which is gel like a structure uh, that supports it's behind the lens this is the lens right not the cornea no this is the lens and behind the lens look the vitreous um, uh, vitreous body supports the lens and it supports the retina inside right so it gives it like support to avoid detachment it prevents kind of the attachment of the retina but anyway sometimes it does happen so yes we mentioned the vitreous um, body also we have a lens we'll talk about the lens but for now it's a transparent uh, biconvex structure it's in, in laterally it's like this biconvex transparent allows the light to pass it through because you know the light comes from the outside to the cornea from cornea pass through the lens from the lens it goes directly to the macula lutea and fufia centralis here the area of the highest visual acuity right so when you go to the uh, physician or to the uh, uh, ophthalmologist he or she uses a ophthalmoscope to look into your eye to see the, uh, uh, the to see listen this area to see this area right the back uh, of the uh, the interior surface of your eye uh, opposite of course to the lens so it includes the uh, um, the retina here the optic disc uh, the macula lutea and the central fovea or fovea centralis and um, the posterior pool i mean of your eye this is a view known as fundus right here is what you see is the fundus of the eye and indeed it's right or left it's um, right why because the macula lutea is temporal is lateral to the optic disc this is the area with the light is the area of the optic disc that contains the head of optic nerve here the head of optic nerve it gives like this color like white color and you know if i erase these uh things you will see this is the optic nerve and inside it there is a central retinal artery and vein here is the central uh, retinal i will use the red color central retinal artery with its a branch like arterioles and so forth and this is uh, central veins and it's a branch right that usually occluded in in uh, uh, diabetic patients lindum sucari so look this is temporal that means always so always remember now lateral to the optic disc you have an area here which is the macula lutea macula lutea in its central area of macula lutea you have a depression here which is not very clear called the fovea centralis this area again concerned with the central vision that means when you look for somebody in front of your face his face 
formed here the central thing right if you read in a textbook you can see different if it's damaged you will see everything around the uh the book but not the the page of the book itself it becomes like a black right this is the central uh, vision it's opposite to the peripheral vision and also the macula has uh we will talk about it but it has why it's the uh, central the area of central vision and high um uh, the the area for high image resolution that formed the high visual acuity there right because it contains uh really packed uh cones and very few roads indeed it's it's uh, uh, it's uh, uh, highly uh, excellent during the light, right? And if you move now from macular lutea to the fovea centralis, you will find that the fovea centralis, this area, contains just only cones, just only cones that gives it the uh, uh, really the um, uh, resolution or the sharpness in the vision so this is the greatest um, sharpest vision and the greatest color discrimination right so uh, it's about the macular lutea it's about four to five uh, or five to six millimeter right so uh, it's the point again of the sharpest vision okay here's uh, a dissected part from the uh, eye in which you see here the optic disc with the central uh, retinal artery and uh, veins and of course lateral to it is the optic uh, or the macula lutea yellow in color and the center there is a depression here called fovea centralis and we know that the fovea region of highest cone density cone is a photoreceptor uh, in arabic it's you have cones and roads cones to see in the light during the day light while the roads to see um, to see in the night right in the dim light or at the night so in the fovea centralis you have just cones what's the benefit being just cones it gives gives it the sharpest vision the vision with high uh, uh, resolution so high acuity uh, vision now macula lutea which is uh, it's yellow color because of the pigment i think the melanin there and uh, the the uh, the the benefit of that that it the of of macula it filters the ultraviolet so first it protects when it filters the ultraviolet that means it protects the eye number one and also it filters the blue color or light in which what does it what does it mean when it filters the blue color that means it gives the image more enhancement more enhancement this is the a macula and we mentioned that the macula contains uh, more and more cones and very few roads but the fovea has just cones now this is the optic test again we mentioned that earlier we will start now to uh, explain each part uh, separately now let us start with the most anterior transparent part which is the cornea so uh, the cornea occupies the most anterior center part of the anterior pole of your eye and it's about 12 millimeter like in horizontal plane and about 11 uh, millimeter vertical right so if you take like this so 12 by 11 uh, millimeter it's uh, histologically it's five layers i don't care too much about that but uh, the most important thing that it has no blood supply 
that has no blood vessels, I mean, because if there is a blood vessels, that means it's not a transparent, but indeed you know that cornea is a transparent tissue because there is no blood vessels there. But what's interesting is that it's one of the, it would be the uh, most, I would say one of the top parts in your body that um, has uh, 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 intensive nerve endings there. That's why when you touch the cornea uh, with a piece of, uh, say, a tissue, then the result will be the uh, plinking, and this is called the uh, corneal reflex, right? So, uh, furthermore, maybe you know that the cornea can be transplanted from one person to another so it's the only part in your eye that can be transplanted from anybody else so now we start with the cornea it's good to remember that the cornea yes it's a transparent structure so what's the main function the main function of it is to uh, refract the light what does it mean you have light from here from there from everywhere so the function of the cornea is to reflect the light and concentrate it and of course with the help of the lens there the uh, lights and the image will be focused back again into the uh, retina in the back of the eye so it's uh, for refracting light even more than the lens right Now, yes, we are talking about the um, fibrous coat, so we finished the uh, cornea, the most anterior transparent structure. Let us move posteriorly now. Posteriorly, as we mentioned in the introduction, you have the continuation of the fibrous coat for what we call it the sclera. This is the white, uh, whites of the eye, right? This is the white of the eye, whites of the eye which is indeed you know that the cornea is transparent but the sclera is opaque structure yes it occupies five sixth of the um of the eye um, and so as i mentioned it's opaque structure that permits no light to pass from or into it from outside or from inside so um, uh, so it's tough fibrous tissue and it's the location look at the muscles so it's the location of attachment of extraocular muscle right so this is the fibrous coat including cornea and cicular that encircles the whole um, eye so it's good to know the stair which is the limbus limbus is the uh, border between the because we talk about the cornea and the sclera so this border between the cornea and the sclera this border we call it limbus so this is the uh, limbus so uh, now let us jump now to the conjunctiva um yes already we talked about conjunctiva in the uh, uh previous lecture but it's good to mem uh, uh memorize uh, to re remind you sorry that it is a mucous membrane so the conjunctiva mucous membrane that lines the eyelids and also reflected there at the fornix upper or lower fornix then it's reflected on the sclera on the part the white part of your eyes on the sclera so it has three parts you have the palpebral part that lines the eyelid anything related to the eyelid something we call it palpebral so this part is the palpebral part of conjunctiva and this is the fornix and here is again the fornix this is superior or upper fornix and inferior fornix and then it's reflected on the sclera we call it bulbar bulbar because 
it's con it's, it's reflected on the eye itself we call it bulbar look at the um, this is lower eyelid that lined by the conjunctiva here this is the palpebral part and this is the fornix and uh, sorry um, yes sorry this is the palpebral part and here is the I would say the fornix and uh, here the bulbar part this is the bulbar part of the conjunctiva that's reflected of course on this clearer right okay explain to you now the chambers of the uh, exist in the eye in which now this is um, a section of the eye in which you see here the part of the cornea and of course the continuation of the cornea posteriorly is the sclera okay and you know that behind the cornea here there is a space right there is a space this is a cornea right completely like this so, so this chamber this space is the anterior chamber which is located behind the cornea and anterior to the iris this is the iris the part we will talk about but this is the part of your eye that um, gives the eyes their color because of the melanin uh, dye so the anterior chamber located behind the cornea but anterior to the iris right this is the iris and there is another chamber which is the posterior chamber which is located here look this is the posterior chamber this one this is space that's located behind the iris in which the uh, aqueous humor the uh, fluid clear fluid that's secreted from the uh, these are processes ciliary processes right so they secrete um, aqueous humor here in the posterior chamber and the aqueous humor moved through the pupil the space that located here and moved to the anterior chamber then from anterior chamber it moved to the opening here Schlem's canal right Schlem's canal then to the venous uh, system there and this is located at the um, sclero corneal or corneal scleral junction so again this diagram also shows the um, transverse section and which this is the most anterior structure which is the cornea that continues of course posteriorly with the sclera and here is the corneal junction in which there is a, a, a Schlem can, Schlem's canal or canal of Schlem here in which look at the ciliary processes here and ciliary processes here that secrete the aqueous humor then it passes in the posterior chamber that's located between the iris and the lens so this chamber this space here is the posterior chamber now the aqueous humor this clear fluid uh, will pass from posterior chamber through the pupil this is the opening of the pupil in the iris right so the iris is like that right that gives your eye the color and in the middle there is a pupil that constricted sometimes becomes small we we'll talk about it sometime no it becomes large in the dim light for example anyway the aqueous humor pass from posterior chamber to the anterior chamber here and then uh, through the um, canal of Schlem or Schlem's canal passes which is slim uh, Schlem's canal it's a kind of a network of vessels close in structure to the lymphatic vessels it's around around this part of the eye it makes like um, uh, it's 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 like a network that encircles the in front of the eye here in which I think I showed you before yes here is the uh, 
let me remind you at the beginning of the lecture so this is the cornea most anteriorly and here is the sclera so at the cornea scleral junction when you look at it here there's an opening you see here this indicates like a network of vessels but when you cut it when you have a cut like this you will see just opening when you cut it like this you will see just opening right that you see here and here but indeed it's a network it's a network of vessels here around the corneocyclial junction so you see the catheter the blue one this catheter they open there at the corneocyclial junction and they inserted the catheter in order to open this um, meshwork of vessels in case of the uh, Schlem's canal um, closed now we reached now this is about the anterior chamber and we explained also the posterior chamber now let us shift to the another important structure which is located posterior posterior to the posterior chamber we said most anteriorly you have the cornea and there is anterior chamber here and then you have the iris that gives your eyes the color here of course it's complete like a ring and there is a pupil here in the middle posterior to the iris you have a posterior chamber here and then the lens so lastly the lens so the lens again it's biconcave structure when you look at it it's like a biconvex sorry biconvex structure and it's a transparent its function similar to the function of the um, cornea but cornea is number one cornea in the uh, refraction is number one but also the lens also refracts also the light as the as uh, the uh, similar to the um, cornea well it's also similar to the cornea it as it is avascular that means there is no blood vessels there but it's not like the cornea because it lacks the innervation there is no innervation and so there is no blood supply there is no blood vessels and there is no innervation but you know that the cornea has yes no blood vessels but it has it's highly innervated anyway back to the lens the lens is here and this is a cross section of it and look at the capsule that encircles it you have anterior capsule and posterior capsule and it has a layer of a cuboidal cell um, uh, what I want to say this elastic capsule envelope uh, it enveloped the cuboidal uh, epithelium here so the lens it's not exists like by its own it's not fixed by its own because it's suspended um, to the uh, ciliary uh, the muscle here ciliary muscles here and the process here by um, a ligament called suspensory you see these lines this is suspensory ligament of lens they fix the lens and they change the shape of the lens uh, in order to uh, accommodate the uh, uh, near vision like when you read it from a textbook or when you look for a site like far away right to adjust to accommodate uh, the vision now it's the only structure that replaced um uh, uh, uh sorry uh, that can be it's not the only structure now it's usually replaced by synthetic structure in case of the cataract because of the position of the protein build up there i think you heard about the um, cataracts in which clouding of the lens and the capsule so usually um, they remove it and they put a synthetic uh, one and it works uh, very well okay that's about the lens and here is also another if you show the cornea anterior chamber then the iris then the posterior chamber here then the lens 
you have to differentiate between iris and lens, right? But back again to the vascular coats. We finished already the cornea and the sclera. Let us move deep now and change the color into the vascular coat, or we call it sometime uveal tract. Uveal tract um, consists again from three parts, which is the same as vascular coat. It composes from posterior to anterior. It composes from the uh, choroid posteriorly and laterally and all the way anteriorly. Then it ends by a pace pyramidal shape like structure, which is the ciliary um, body. This is the ciliary body here. And of course, here is a choroid, and this is the ciliary body. And from ciliary body, let us finish the coat, then extends the uh, into, to form the iris that gives your eyes the color. Some people have um, green eyes, blue eyes, brown eyes. The color of their the color of your eyes determined by melanin there in the iris so this is the color what you see is the color of your iris not lens iris okay here is the coat the vascular coat um, so let us talk about the iris that gives the colored part of your eyes um, so it's not just gives your eye the its color but also it's unique for every individual it's like a fingerprint it's like the fingerprint it's uh, uh recently they use it for biometric identification biometric identification so the the iris has a fine texture uh, which is like fingerprint so um uh it's determined randomly, of course, during empyreonic uh, gestation. So everyone has distinct, um, um, uh, distinct fingerprint. And what's interesting that uh, uh, even genetically identical individual. Uh, they have completely independent iris texture. So the iris texture is different even from your from the for the same person between the uh, left and right eyes of the same individual. So it's different. So it's like a fingerprint. They use it in the airport and for biometric identification. Anyway, in Arabic. So um now the the most let us um let us take the iris that you see where is the iris this is the iris of course you have to remove the cornea and this is the iris in which in the center it has a hole that makes the pupil let us take it out so let us have a look here. Yes, forget the cornea, the most transparent structure that we cannot see in this. Yes, you, of course, it's here, the transparent one. Now, move to the anterior chamber. Now, posterior to it, you have the uh, iris. So, it's like that. And, of course, encircles the whole eye. Now, this is the, this is the um, iris. Okay. Uh, now... Um, when you look to the iris, it's composed, which is very important, it's composed from uh, tiny muscles. You have dilator um, pupillae outside. This is the dilator pupillae, and from its name, once it's stimulated, um, it dilates or this muscle dilates the pupil this is dilator pupil you see these fiber directed outside right these fibers that directed outside we call it dilator pupil 
Now, on the other hand, there is a small circular muscle in the center called sphincter pupillae. Sphincter pupillae, from its name, um, once stimulated, it constricts the eye. For example, here, the sphincter pupillae, let me embrace it. In this figure, the look at the arrows that shows the sphincter pupillae stimulated. The result will be constrict from its name, sphincter pupillae. That means these fibers here constricts the pupil, make it small. While on the other hand, the, other, the outer fibers, which is related to for what we call it dilator pupillae, these fibers, once they contracted, they dilate the eye. Like in case you are in a dim light, بالعتمه, right? Your, the pupil will be dilated. So dilator pupillae is under the control of sympathetic system right while the uh, sphincter pupillae under the uh, uh, control of parasympathetic uh, system so look at the cross section here um, in which you see the cornea and the anterior chamber here posterior to it you have the iris and look at the iris here this is the iris just exposed part of it here so you, it, it this is the iris of course that has uh, the color of your eyes but here like they remove this kind of things and relieve the muscles from the iris exposed so this is the dilator pupil once they contracted of course the as i mentioned earlier the dilator the dilator pupil under the sympathetic stimulation for example when you get like um uh, uh, when you feel like fear from something so your pupil like dilated under sympathetic stimulation right um, or when you get in the dark you saw your pupil dilated to collect more light right to get in the retina on the other hand the sphincter pupil these kind these centric circular muscle under the control of parasympathetic system that constrict that constricts the eyeball now it's clear here in the dim light so the pupil dilated how is dilated because of the dilator pupillae here the muscle right which is under the sympathetic system while on the other hand in the bright light what will happen in the bright light so this is the middle situation right so in the if this if there is a bright light the sphincter pupil here the circular fibers will constrict and which is under the parasympathetic nerve and constrict the pupil to decrease the amount of the light getting there and to protect the um, retina and the eye so this um, summarize what I mentioned so you have to know the muscle and where it's located it's circularly for example sphincter pupil is circularly arranged that but that the dilator radially arranged like this right but the sphincter pupil it's circularly centrally around uh, related to the iris so that's under parasympathetic and a sympathetic system and this is the function of each one as we mentioned here is just to show you the uh, ciliary ganglion and to show you that we have sensation um, moves to the eye and you have sympathetic and parasympathetic stimulation all they pass through the ciliary ganglion which is parasympathetic ganglion but also at the same time you will get sympathetic fibers and sensory fibers um, to the eye they bypass the ciliary ganglion they pass through the long ciliary nerve without passing through the ciliary ganglion um, here right so uh, let us now um, start with 
uh, another part other than the uh, yes, we are talking about vascular uh, coat, including the choroid and ciliary body and iris. We finished the iris with the muscles. Look at the fibers of the muscle, um, the later pupillae, and here is the small centrally fibers, which is the sphincter pupillae. Anyway, let us jump now to the ciliary body. This is structure. When you say ciliary body, it composed from ciliary muscles you see here and ciliary processes yes so it's as i mentioned triangle in shape if you look at the ciliary body it's triangular in shape and it's between the choroid and the iris and it forms like a complete ring around the eye right yes it's a cross section here but indeed it's like that but it's triangular in shape right so um so um yes I, as i mentioned from form from ciliary muscles and um a projections here which is the ciliary uh, processes and extended from the ciliary processes if you see here is a zonular fibers. These fibers collectively form the suspensory ligament of the lens because you know this is the lens, right? Because you know this is the cornea, anterior chamber, then um, the iris, then the iris, then posterior uh, chamber, then the lens. Now, so. Uh, the lens, as I mentioned earlier in this lecture, fixed in its location, not just by the uh, this part that we will talk about it posterior to it, vitreous body, no, but also by a ligament fibers here, zonular fibers that attach to the ciliary muscle and to the lens, so they suspend the lens and controls its shape in um, to accommodate the vision, right? So these are. The suspensory, they attach, of course, to the lens, and so fix it and control its shape. Now, ciliary body, as I mentioned, composed from the ciliary muscles, as you see here, and the ciliary processes. So I don't want to repeat again what I mentioned, but how is the, the contraction and relaxation of the ciliary muscle here affects the shape of the lens in a relation to looking for a distant object يعني جسم بعيد تطلع بعيد or nearby object like reading from a textbook close to you so the you know that the uh, ciliary body uh, is like a triangular in shape that's fine but it encircles the whole uh, front of the eye right at that uh, location now uh, let us ignore that now and take this uh, let, let us draw it here so say this is for example the um, the uh, ciliary body and see these ciliary muscles and you know it sends like suspensory uh, ligament uh, of the lens this is the lens right because you know it's in suspensory ligaments of the uh, lens because you know this is the lens so say when the ciliary muscles relax that means the diameter uh, becomes wider that means say the diameter becomes like wider right so again you have the lens here so what will happen to the suspensory ligament suspensory ligament now tighten right and they pull the um, they pull the uh, um, the lens and then the lens because you know it's pi convex now the lens becomes like thinner right which is uh, which is 
uh, which is good for a distant object so that means when you look for an an object that's away from you your ciliary muscles relaxed once they're relaxed of course which is good now the uh, suspensory ligament will be tightened because the diameter uh, uh, the diameter of them must become the become uh, like wider and the lens becomes like flat or thinner to accommodate to to accommodate the distant the vision from of the distant object now opposite to that when you read or look or focus on something close to you like for example when you read from the textbook when you read from the screen also now what will happen that the ciliary muscle now will contract right now contract when it's contract that means the diameter becomes smaller how is that that means again uh, this is the ciliary body and the ciliary muscle here so when the ciliary muscle contracts that means the um the diameter uh, becomes like uh, uh smaller that means the suspensory ligament becomes like shorter and shorter that means you are slacking the suspensory ligament and uh, stacking the suspensory ligament and in this case it becomes back to it is thicker shape right it's not thin now no it's uh, thick that's occur when you're focusing on nearby object so um this is of course we call the accommodation uh to the distant object or to the nearby object by the uh, lens and ciliary muscle now back to the uh, vascular coat which is we started with the choroid here this is the i would use the red color right so this is the vascular layer which is the posterior portion of the uveal tract or the vascular coat because you know anteriorly com com um, continues with the ciliary body and iris and similarly iris ciliary body and again this is the choroid the red color right so it's about 0.2 millimeters it's very thin it's highly vascularized so it's you know look inside it you have uh, the yellow um, uh, layer which is the nervous layer that means I'm talking about the retina so the choroid back again to the choroid the choroid the red one um, uh, nourish the outer portion of the uh, retina the blue color right now back again the yes as we moved uh, internally but I will leave the retina up to the end let us see the uh, vitreous body the vitreous body that means I think in Arabic just mzujaji um which is uh, indeed uh, located inside the eye pole and it supports it's like a gel like a structure mostly composed from water up to 98 92 of water with like of course glucose anion cations ions and collagen anyway it supports the retina it attaches to the for example um uh, here to the macula and adheres tightly to the lens anteriorly so it supports the lens so the lens not just supported by suspensory um by suspensory uh, ligament of the lens no but also support from the back by this body uh vitreous um body and it's a transparent that means it allows the light that passes the cornea and the lens to pass it through it back to the retina um 
so also it provides a metabolic nutrient requirement of the lens right sometime uh, you know it needs to be replaced and recently yes um, uh, the, they can replace it successfully now the retina the retina is uh, um, forming the internal layer uh, of the eyeball which is the most internal layer which is an extension from the brain right so once the the light passes through the cornea and lens it moves to the back until it reaches the internal surface of the eye which is the retina is there in which it converts uh, the light energy uh, into the um, uh, electrical energy by you know the light should pass let us take a cross section from the uh, retina you see it passes deep to the most outer layer of the retina right until it reaches and stimulates the roads and cones right once they stimulated uh, they stimulate the bipolar um, cells once bipolar cells stimulated they stimulate out the uh, ganglion cells and you know a nerve impulse now carried from axon by the axon of ganglion cells to the optic nerve because they form the optic nerve right then to the brain so uh, here I doubt that's the right forget that right so the retina my friends um, I'm, I'm, I'm shadowing the let me use this color now um, the retina is the yellow color the most internal layer of the eye in which the light comes from the cornea lens here and then to the um, retina there so it composed the retina composed from two parts you see this posterior and lateral part this one is the optic part of the retina stop here and the posterior lateral all the way anteriorly stop here so this is the optic part of retina that's sensitive to light that means when there's light come here and there so there's a photoreceptors and they convert the light into electrical signals but anteriorly it continues um, anteriorly that lines the internal service of ciliary body do you remember the ciliary body and the iris so there is a small yellow um, color here that indicates the non-visual part of retina we mentioned that the retina composed from optic part this posterior lateral one and non-visual part this one that lines the ciliary body and the iris lines the ciliary body and uh, iris now the junction between the optic part and the um, uh, 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 non-visual part called aura serrata so this is the aura uh, serrata right this is the aura serrata of course under the whole eye from the other side of course right so yes this is the this is the uh, aura serrata this is the border this is the optic part of the retina and this is the non-visual part of the retina and this is the border between them that called aura serrata right now back again to the cross section of the eye close to the to this area optic nerve this is the optic nerve just to explain to you from outside this is the sclera right the white color of your eye then this is the choroid the layer of uh, second layer the vascular layer then there is a uh, retina and uh, here is the uh, uh, you see the optic 
uh, part of the retina and the optic part if you take a cross section of it you will find it composed from two layers we mentioned that the layer here in the back i mean the layer of the retina is the optic part right but it composed from two layers um the pigmented layer you see here this is the pigmented layer which is tightly attached look at it here this is uh do, this is the choroid right this one is the choroid but there is a layer here which is the pigmented layer that um attached to the choroid as you see here as a one layer you see now it's like a one layer this is brown and this is small line of cells right the pigmented layer now the pigmented layer continues anteriorly right say from here continues the pigmented layer continues anteriorly over the internal surface of ciliary body and the iris right so we can consider even the pigment layer is the non-visual layer non-visual layer anteriorly um now the neural layer the rest of the second layer because this is the pigmented layer as we mentioned here but this is the neural layer in which uh, uh, it's subdivided as you see into various neural it, it has various neural components as you see here so this layer neural layer uh, is the only uh, attached to the pigmented layer around it's attached to a pigmented layer around the optic nerve here as you see and anteriorly that means here and the aura serrata that means uh, the neural layer can be uh, separated and in this case we call it detached retina we call it detached retina that means the neural layer this kind of uh, th this one this one we call it a neural layer as you see here but this is pigmented layer outside so the neural layer attached just to pigmented layer at the region of the look at here at the region of the optic nerve right and anteriorly at the um, aura serrata right and in this case it's uh, uh, it is uh, um, it can be detached um, uh, the neural layer can be detached from the choroid and pigmented layer and this case called detached retina right well what's the function of pigmented layer of the retina pigmented layer absorbs light and prevents it's like scattering right and it continues anteriorly as a non-visual part if you remember here non-visual part here non-visual part here right so back again uh, to the uh, optic nerve this is the optic nerve that of course leaves uh, formed by the axons of ganglion cell and uh, uh, leaves the uh, the retina and when you look at the eye using uh, ophthalmoscope you will see that at the um, at the optic nerve at the region of the optic nerve it's lighter than the surrounding area look at it it's like a light and there is a there is a branch of central artery and veins as i mentioned right but you know because of the penetration of the optic nerve and central vessels there is um no light sensitive receptor cells there is no um uh, uh, there is no cones there is no roads that means it's not light sensitive there's no light sensitive receptor cells in the optic disc it's the blind spot 
النقطة العمياء in the retina no image formed there right but interestingly lateral to the optic nerve when you look to, uh, through the ophthalmoscope lateral to it not medial lateral to it you have a yellow um, like a yellowish this, uh, yellowish coloration here is called macular lutea that means the yellow, the yellow body and uh, in center of it which is not clear here this is a fovea uh, uh, centralis this is the thinnest area of the retina and most interestingly it's the visual sensitivity here the visual sensitivity is higher than anywhere in the retina that means you have a high resolution of the image here is the center of central image right um, in the macular lutea there is a lot of packly uh, uh, tightly packed uh, cones and very small of roads that means there is a lot of cones that means it's good for light vision right and the food but in the fovea centralis here there's just cones just cones right and uh, thank you for watching and uh, i hope you find value in it thank you